that they had picked up in New Orleans. And back at that time, New Orleans and Key West were very heavily populated trading ports. And vessels came from all over the world to trade goods there. Now, a lot of these vessels were unfamiliar with the waters because they were pretty much uncharted. So they didn't know the reef was here, so they ran aground. And the cotton was doing a very good job of absorbing all of the water that was coming in until the cotton started to expand and it broke the hull apart. We've got another queen angel fish up here in the front. Where did she go? She's hanging out right by the coral there. She's feeding on some of the sponge that's down there. She's just over there on the right hand side. That's what angel fish feed on. Here she is. And there's another one actually. Bright yellow tail. You will never see angel fish in pairs unless it's their mating season because they don't get along very well. Never see saltwater aquariums. There's only one angel fish in there. But nobody lost their lives off that vessel, as far as we know. We were told that um, they just swam over to the shallowest portion of this reef and they stood around there and sat around and just waited to be rescued. But as you can see, the area never recovered, and even though that was hundreds of years ago. Corals are, have no natural immune system like we do, so if anybody ever wondered why fish were slimy and sticky, well, that's their immune system. It protects them from parasites and bacteria in the seawater. So if any polyp becomes affected by parasites or bacteria, eventually the whole coral colony does. Well, barracudas right underneath their feet down there. See here in the back? Notice the different colors that they have in the pattern? One has spots, the other one doesn't. Now, this area right here is another browning that we've had, and we call this area Flagler's Graveyard. The road that you drive through the Florida Keys on was originally part of Henry Flagler's Overseas Railroad, or Railroad to the Sea. He and his family built the East Coast Railroad. He told, was told it was an impossible task because the mainland was trying to take fruits and vegetables down to Key West for trade. But unfortunately, in the hot sun and two weeks on a barge or any type of a boat, cargo vessel, they didn't quite make it. Now these are smallmouth grunts right here in the center. You see them coming down my right hand side. They're somewhere right underneath my feet here. These are little smallmouth grunts there. But in 1935, on Labor Day weekend, a hurricane came through the Florida Keys, and at that time, it was the worst hurricane ever recorded to hit land. Cargo vessel carrying some rail southward to make some repairs on the existing railroad got caught in that storm. They didn't know it was coming until it was just right on, almost right on top of them, actually. So when they got hung up on the reef, they just threw the rails overboard so they could lighten their load, so they could float off the reef and make it into safe harbor which we understand everyone did, except for Henley Flagler's Railroad. It didn't fare so well. A major portion of it was wiped out. And cars were becoming more popular by that time, so they had already started building a road. But Henry Flagler was in very poor health. He was legally blind, and he was flat broke. So he had no 